All right, we're in our week three lecture and notes, and uh, make sure you print these notes off before you watch the video. Um, week three is probably the toughest week of the course, uh, but certainly nothing that you can't do. It just takes some extra practice. And um, I, I use, a, well, basically what you need to learn in this uh, section is how to factor. And um, it's great to learn how to factor and factor well because it's going to keep coming up in pretty much every other math class you take after this. Um, so learn it now so that it doesn't just keep haunting you later on. And um, I've got a factoring technique that I think is um, one of the best out there that I'm going to show you. And you might have learned other factoring techniques. Um, and if you're comfortable with those, then, then by all means, please use them. All right, so a prime number, uh, let me get my pen going here. You've probably heard of a prime number before. It is a number that is only divisible by itself and one. So let's look at um, the first 10 prime numbers. One is not prime. Um, it is only divisible by itself in one, but for some reason the, the first prime number is defined as two. And three, five, seven, uh, you'll notice that after two, all the prime numbers are odd. Nine is not prime though because it's divisible by three. Then we have 11, 13, 17, 19, and 23. You'll notice I skipped 21 because remember that's 3 times 7. Um, so let's look at some prime factorization of numbers. So um, the reason I start with this is because I want to show you that you can factor numbers. So 18 can be factored as 9 times 2. And we want the prime factorization. So 9 is not prime. We're going to write it as 3 times 3. And then um, the final solution, I, I write it in order, so my prime numbers are this, these that I've circled. It's going to be 2 times 3 squared, all right, because we've got two threes there. I'm going to write it as, as 3 squared, so this is the standard practice of how to write your answer. 26 is easy because it's just 13 times 2, so its prime factorization is 2 times 13. 36. Now, it doesn't matter how you break it down, I'm going to use 9 and 4. If you use 6 and 6 or 12 and 3, you're going to get the same answer. So 9, again, can be broken down as 3 times 3, and 4 is 2 times 2. So these are our prime numbers. So we get 2 squared times 3 squared. 105, um, since it ends in a 5, we know it's divisible by 5. <laughs> and it's 5 times uh, 21, actually. 5 is already prime, but 21 is 3 times 7. So its prime factorization is 3 times 5 times 7. So that's how we factor a number. Um, with two or more numbers, or expressions, the greatest common factor, or GCF, is the largest number or expression that each number has in common. So, um, what is the GCF of 36 and 90? Well, if you factor the numbers, 36 is 9 times 4, and 90 is 9 times 10. So they both have a 9. Um, but if you look at 4 and 10, those both can be broken down. Um, 4 is 2 times 2, and 10 is uh, 2 times 5. So they also both share a 2. 
which means that 9 times 2, which is 18, is going to be the largest number that we can factor out of both of those. Um, so if we double check, 90 divided by 18 is 5, yeah. Um, if we look at 15, 25, and 27, well, 15 has a 3 and a 5, 25 a 5 and a 5, 27 is 3 cubed, 5 squared, and 3 times 5. It doesn't appear that they have any number in common except for 1, or any common factor except for 1. Um, because the 15 has a 3 and a 5, but the 25 only has a 5, and the 27 only has a 3. Now with variables, it, um, it's easy because the greatest common factor is just going to be the one with the lowest exponent. Variables and numbers, um, well the 20 and the 15 both have a 5 in common, and that's it. negative 21x cubed and 14x. Um, we're, we don't have to worry about that negative out there for GCF. Um, and generally, uh, if you're asked for to find the GCF, you're just going to find the positive GCF. So between 21 and 14, the greatest common factor would be 7. Between x cubed and x, it would just be x. Alright, f. Um, let's look at the 7, the negative 21, and the 14. Uh, again, the, the greatest common factor would be 7 between those. Within the x's, the one with the smallest exponent is just plain old x, and with the y's, it would be y squared. So numbers are actually harder to get GCFs with than variables, because variables, you just take the one with the lowest exponent. So our first factoring problem is 6a, and we want to take, find the GCF and then factor it out. So the GCF between 18a and 12 would be 6, so we're going to take a 6 out and it's kind of like on distributing. So really what you're doing is you're dividing it out. 18a divided by 6 would be 3a. Oh. And then 12 divided by 6 would be 2. So it's 6, let me write it a little clearer, 6 times 3a plus 2. With 42x and minus 7, we can take a 7 out. So 42x divided by 7 would be 6x. 7 divided by 7 is 1. So 7 times 6x minus 1. And if you just quickly in your head distribute that 7, you'll see that you get back the same thing. The GCF of y to the 5th and 6y to the 4th would be y to the 4th. So if you divide that out of each one, you get y plus 6. With d, we can take out a 5x squared. And we're left with 1 plus 2x to the fourth power. So again, you're using those exponent rules that you learned in the first week. You're using the quotient rule, x to the sixth divided by x to the uh, second would give you x to the fourth. e, 6x cubed minus 9x squared plus 12x, we can take out a 3x. And we're left with 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. <coughs> With f, um, we have x, x is, the smallest exponent would be x cubed, and within the y's it would be y cubed. So using those exponent rules and dividing, we're going to get x to the 6, y squared, no, y to the cubed, sorry. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so it's 9 minus 3 is, is 6, and then three, 6 minus 3 is 3. Um, plus, now the x cubed divided by x cubed is just 1, so we get y squared there. 
minus x, and then that's it because the y cubes divide out. Uh, and the last term is just 1 because you're dividing the whole thing out. With g, um, the only thing we can take out of all of them would be a 3. So just divide everybody by 3 and you're golden. H is a little tricky because of the fractions, um, but they all have the same denominator, so we're just going to take out the smallest of them, which is 2 fifths, and a y we can take out. So um, in the first term, we're going to get just y to the 6, and then 4 fifths divided by 2 fifths um, gives you just minus 2. So minus 2y to the 4th. And uh, 3 fifths divided by 2 fifths is going to be 3 halves. So 3 halves y. And then 2 fifths divided by itself is just 1. So um, we just get a minus, minus 1 there. And if the fractions are bothering you, um, don't let them. Just use your calculator. You're dividing. So take each term and divide it by 2 fifths. Alright, I and J, um, you'll notice, look a little different, but they are important because we do what's called factoring by grouping, and it's good to, um, to have that skill. So, um, these are already grouped for us, and we see that they each have a common term of Y squared plus 1, so we're going to take that whole thing out, just like we would a single number. And what's left <coughs> is the X minus 3. And J, they have the X plus 2 in common, so we take that out, and we're left with 8 minus Y. Um, if the first term of a polynomial starts with a negative, then generally you want to take out the negative GCF. So we're going to take out a negative 7 here in 7A, and we're left with 1 plus 3Y. In B, we can take out a negative 5m cubed, and we're left with m to the third power minus 2m squared, and then just plus 1, because that whole last term gets factored out. Alright, so I told you that factoring by grouping um, is important. That's what we're going to do next in number 8. So to factor by grouping, we're going to factor the GCF. In fact, in any type of factoring, you always start by factoring the GCF. Then we're going to draw a line splitting the first two terms from the last two, factor out the common factor from each group, factor out the resulting common binomial factor. If there's no common binomial factor, check your factoring there for a mistake. And then um, let's look at some examples. So I'm going to group it. I'm just going to split it up. And I'm going to take out the x squared in the first two terms because that's its common factor. And in the second two terms, I can take out a positive 3. Now, it's important that you write that plus 3 there because they're going to go together with the x squared and you need either a plus or a minus. And you'll notice that um, once I take out that 3, I have the same thing left over. So I factor out the um, the greatest common or the great the, the, the factor that they have in common and then what's left is the x squared plus 3. Okay? So B, let's split it up. Take out the y. We're left with x plus 1. Take out a positive 2. Again we're left with x plus 1. They have that x plus 1 in common so we take it out and we're left with y plus 2. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that worked that way. Okay. C, split it up. We have 16x cubed minus 28x squared minus 12x minus 21. Between 16 and 28, we can take out a 4. 
and an x squared. So we're left with 4x minus 7. And the second two, um, we're going to take out a negative because we start with a negative there. Um, so it'll be minus, uh, what can we take out? A 3. Take a negative 3 and we're left with a positive 4x now um, plus 7. So we have a mistake somewhere because they're not matching up. Um, oh, I see what I did. If we delete this, I thought it was a minus 12x and it's positive. So we want to take out actually um, a positive 3. So we get 4x and then this term will be the minus 7 that we need. So take out the 4x minus 7s. And we're left with 4x squared plus 3. Alright, D. 8w squared plus 7wv plus 8w plus 7v. Take out a w in the first two and we're left with 8w plus 7v. In the second two we can't take anything out but a 1 but we need to take out that positive 1 because we need something to go with the w out here. So we're taking out a 1, nothing changes in the inside but now we can take out the 8w plus 7v and we're left with w plus 1. Alright, E. I'm careful to be splitting these up now so I don't change the sign on myself. Um, 6x minus 42, I can take out a 6 and I'm left with x minus 7. xy minus 7y, I can take out a y and I'm left with x minus 7. So we get x minus 7 times 6 plus y. And f, I can take an x squared out of 2x cubed minus x squared. And I'm left with 2x minus 1. And I'm going to take out a negative 2 so that my signs are correct. Um, oh, a negative 5 rather. And I'm left with uh, 2x minus 1. So if you took out a positive 5, you would see that your signs were wrong and you can just adjust. So we get 2x minus 1 times x squared minus 5. Pick two more of these. Alright, we can take out y squared in the first two. 4y to the fourth plus x y squared. And we're left with 4y squared plus 1. We can take out a 5y here. And we're left with 4y squared plus 1 again. So we get 4y squared plus 1 times y squared plus 5y. Um little problem though, y squared oops, and 5y um, both have a, a GCF of y. Um, so that's where we, we messed up. We should have taken a y out of all of them from the get-go. But it's okay. We can fix it here. Um, so I'm going to write it down here. We can take out that y and um, we're only taking it out of that second group. So we get y plus 5. And now we're good. But it's a good thing to check to make sure that none of your terms have a GCF other than 1. Alright, last one. We can take out a 15 and we get 6 plus y squared. And then we're going to take out a negative 3x. And we get uh, 6 plus y squared again. So our answer is 6 plus y squared times 15 minus 3x. So 
So you notice we have the same problem here. We need to take out a 3 from this term. So I'm going to bring it all, all the way out to the outside. And I get 5 minus x. Now we're good. So again, we could have taken that uh, 3 out of everybody from the beginning, but it's okay. You can always adjust it at the end. All right, now um, on to our factoring trinomials. <coughs> Give me one second here. Y plus five. Okay. So um, these are relatively easy. Let me get rid of this blob here so you can see. Um, so if we're factoring a trinomial, in the form x squared plus bx plus c. Um, for example, 2x squared plus 18x plus 40. First thing in any factoring is take out the GCF. So we can take a 2 out of all of them and we're left with x squared plus 9x plus 20. <coughs> Notice now that our coefficient on x squared is 1. So our a in ax squared plus bx plus c is 1. So this is the type where the, the a is 1. Um, so we look at the last term, the c, the 20, and um, we want to write down all the factors of 20. Uh, later on we're going to see that really all we wanted was the positive factors, but for now let's look at all the factors of 20. So I have them here, 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5, negative 1, negative 20, negative 2, negative 10, and negative 4, negative 5. What we're looking for is the pair that are going to add up to the b. So b is 9, it's the coefficient on the middle term, and we see that that pair would be 4 and 5. 4 times 5 equals 20, and um, 4 plus 5 equals 9. So that's exactly what we wanted. So all we do now is we rewrite it. We know that um, to get x squared we're going to need an x and an x. Um, so if you remember back in last week's lecture, um, we would multiply out with the boxes and um, so we'd, we'd be giving, given a form x plus something times x plus something and we would multiply that out to see what that is. So now we're on doing that. Um, we're trying to find out what you would multiply by to get what we have. Um, so you want to put fill in these boxes with the answer you found up here. So that would be the 4 and the 5. So you put the 4 and the 5 in. Don't forget the 2 that you pulled out. Check your answer. So remember that you could check it like this with the box method. So you get x squared, 4x, 5x, 20, add your diagonal, you get 9x. Is that what we started with? Um, well, no, we started with that 2 on the outside, but for the inside part, that is correct. Um, we'd get x squared plus 9x plus 20. So you can always check that your factoring is correct. So let's try some. Um, all you need to do is just write out your parentheses of your x in it. So we need something that multiplies to be 8 and adds up to be 6. Well, 4 times 2 equals 8 and 4 plus 2 equals 6, so it's just going to be x plus 2 or x, and x plus 4. Um, you could also write it as x plus 4 times x plus 2. Either one of those is fine. Um, B. B doesn't belong. Oh, I forgot to change that one. Okay. Um, yeah, this problem shouldn't be here because it's not the type that we're talking about right now. So I'm giving you a new one. Alright, we need factors of 30 that add up to negative 11. Well, 6 and 5 multiply to be 30, but they add up to be positive 11. Um, so instead of positive 6 and 5, we're going to use negative 6 
and negative 5. So we get y minus 6 times y minus 5. C we need to arrange but in the right order. So it's going to be x squared minus 9x plus 20. So we need factors of 20 that add up to be negative 9. In the previous example we were looking for positive 9 and we used positive 4 and positive 5. But this time we want negative 9 so we're going to use the negative 4 and the negative 5. Um, D has two, two variables but it works um, essentially the same. So if you're going to have a y, x and a y. Um, so the number we're looking at here is 8. What multiplies to be 8 but adds up to be 6? Well, we already know that would be 4 and 2. So it's going to be plus 2y and plus 4y. Again, you can, you can multiply that out with the box method or foiling to check it. Another two variable one, so just make sure that you have a, an A and a B. And we're looking at something that multiplies to be 18 but adds up to negative 9. So that would be minus 3 and minus 6. And F, we have a GCF we can take out. So we're left with X squared. Um, we take out the X, we're left with X squared minus 3X minus 28. So we need something that multiplies to be negative 28 but adds up to be 3. Well, uh, let's look at the pairs of, of 28. Um, negative 28. So one has to be positive, one has to be negative. So we could do negative 7 and 4 or negative 4 and 7. We could do negative 2 and 14 or negative 14 and 2. And those are, um, oh, there is another pair. You could do negative 28 and 1 or negative 1 and 28. But which pair is going to add up to be negative 3? That would be the very first one that we picked. So we're going to have x times x minus 7 times x plus 4. And later on I'm going to show you on the calculator um, for larger numbers um, a quick way to find that magic pair that works. Alright, perfect square trinomials um, are just how they sound. They factor out to be a perfect square. Um, and it's good to recognize these because it makes your factoring a whole lot easier. Um, you'll remember when we did the boxes, like if I gave you x plus 4 squared, um, that would be x plus 4 times x plus 4. And I told you that what happens in the, um, with the middle term is that it's just double the two terms multiplied together because you're going to get, with this one, a 4x and a 4x, which is double 4x or 8x. So, if you um, recognize, so this, this works out to be x squared plus 8x plus 16. So if you recognize that the first two terms are both perfect squares, and the middle, um, so it, x squared is a perfect square of x. Oops. <laughs> x squared is the perfect square of x and 16 is the perfect square of 4. Multiply those two together. x times 4, that's 4x. If you double it, it's 8x. So that's your quick check to see that it's a perfect square trinomial. Alright, so let's look at x squared plus 18x plus 81 x squared is the perfect square of x. 81 is the perfect square of 9. If I multiply x times 9, I get 9x. If I double it, it's 18x. So this is indeed a perfect square trinomial. And its factor would just be x plus 9 squared. It's going to be those two numbers that you pulled out here. here and here. It's a lot of arrows going around. Alright, 
b, x squared would be the perfect square of x, 36, 6. Now if you multiply 6 and x, you get 12x, so it is a perfect square trinomial. The middle term is negative though, so this one you want to write as x minus 6 squared. C. Um, 25x squared is the perfect square of 5x, and 2 squared gives you 4. Again, your middle term is negative, and if I multiply 5x times 2, that's 10x, double is 20x, so it's definitely a perfect square trinomial. It's going to be 5x minus 2, all squared. With D, the perfect square of m to the fourth is m squared and 5 is 25. 5 squared is 25. Multiply them together, you get 5m squared, doubled is 10m squared, so it's going to be m squared plus 5, all squared. Um, e, I can take out a 3 from all of them, and I get y squared minus 2y plus 1. y is, the per is y squared gives you y squared, and then 1 squared gives you 1, and y times 1 is 1y, doubled gives you 2y, but since it's a minus there, we want to put subtraction, so y minus 1 squared. Don't forget to bring down that 3. So you get 3 times y minus 1 squared. With f, we can take out um, Oh, I'm on the wrong page here. Um, well, we can't take out anything, but 9y squared is the perfect square of 3y. 64 is 8 squared, and it's positive in the middle, so it should be 3y plus 8 squared. Don't forget to check 3y times 8 is 24y, doubled is 48y, so that one's correct. Okay, um, I'm going to stop the video here, and I'm going to do the second part um, in a second video. Um, so it would be a good time to go ahead and um, start working on the, the beginning problems of your homework until you get to um, factoring trinomials of this form where A is not 1.